we have been discussing systems of classification of ragas in Hindustani music and uh, we saw that Mela and Raganga Padhati are two systems that are in use in contemporary performance uh, practices. The Ragaragini system is of uh, historical interest and is no longer used. Now, um, both Mela and Raganga, um, they, they serve as tools to make the large number of Ragas manageable, to uh, create some connections between them, to see how one Raga uh, is similar to another, uh, another Raga or different from another Raga. So all these things really uh, help to make the large number of Ragas manageable for the performer. Raga, the Raganga and Mela Padhati also have pedagogical value and uh, certainly Raganga is uh, more useful, more insightful uh, from the performance point of view. And as I mentioned, uh, both Mela and Raganga are used simultaneously depending on the context. The uh, Hindustani music, the world of Hindustani music does not see an either or situation here. It is not as if you have to belong to one camp or the other. Most musicians freely use both uh, systems of classification to really get a hold on uh, the large number of ragas that, uh, that are in practice. Um, because you see the two systems of classification, as I have mentioned before, pivot around different aspects of ragas. The male system revolves around the notes that are used in ragas. So the mere, one might say, physical aspect of the raga, just what notes are used. Whereas raganga revolves around the phrases, the chalan, the the phrases and their ucharan more importantly, right? how they are rendered. The same uh, phrase, let us say, let, if you have nipa, you can render it in different ways. The, the ucharan can be different and that makes for different ragangas. Now, both have limitations, both mela and raganga padhati, they have limitations. Um, not every raga can be unproblematically classified under uh, a mela, you know, or under the mela system or under the raganga system. There are always problems, and uh, as far as the raganga padhati goes, uh, who is to say how many ragangas are there, right? So, again, as I've mentioned, there are uh, differences of opinion about the number of ragangas, but the uh, performance tradition, as I said, uses this in a very pragmatic way. There is no seeking after the perfect classification system and uh, we do not have musicologists also uh, trying to offer a perfect classification system for ragas. Perhaps this is just a recognition of the fact that ragas are really quite unclassifiable. Each raga is unique and uh, coming up with a perfect classification system might well be impossible. The raganga padhati is uh, certainly more useful for the performer uh, because uh, it does give insights into how a certain phrase has to be handled. So if you know that it belongs to say uh, Kannada ang then thereby we know that the Gandhara, the Ga, occupies a certain position on the Shruti uh, gamut and that it has to be shaken in a certain way. So, Raganga Padhati does offer uh, insights to the performer. The male system um, is, does have a more, a weaker presence and uh, most musicians pay lip service to it. It is not dismissed, but it is not treated with great seriousness. In Carnatic music, on the other hand, the 72 male system 
uh, has a considerable hold. You will remember that when the 72 melas were propounded, uh, this was in the 17th century, uh, most of those 72 had no practical application. That is, there were no ragas in circulation at that time that used many of those scales or uh, portions, you know, uh, derivatives of those scales. In fact, Venkatamakhin himself only named 19 of those 72 melas. The naming of the rest of them came later. His uh, uh, successor, he named the rest of the 72. So, remember again that in the earlier treatises when Mela system was uh, being propounded, the number of Melas were much smaller, 19, 12, 23, in keeping with the uh, requirements of performance tradition. Uh, and Bhatkhande again, he, he carried forth that approach to the Mela system and he uh, only propounded, he said that we only need 10 Melas or 10 thoughts to account for to, or to classify all the prevalent ragas in Hindustani music. But what happened with in Carnatic music is that uh, though uh, the many of the scales were not in use, many of the scales or their derivatives were not uh, ragas, um, even though that was the case, it was only a matter of time before these new and exotic scales or their derivatives be began to be rendered as ragas. See, it's um, we have hundreds and hundreds of possible scales in various combinations, whether some purna, there is seven, all seven up and down, or five and seven, or five and five, you know. Uh, the Audava Shadava, some purna schema, if you take that. There are hundreds of scales possible, but there are uh, only there is only a fraction of ragas. Fraction of that is actually found as ragas. So all these other possibilities, uh, as I said, it was only a matter of time before Carnatic music musicians started rendering these scales as ragas. So in a sense, the new exotic scales were given life, right? Life was breathed into these scales and they emerged as ragas and even today many of uh, lots of uh, these uh, new ragas are in circulation and many of them are quite captivating. Um, though they do not have the challenge in, inbuilt in them that uh, traditional ragas have and therefore they are less interesting. There is these uh, newer ragas, so to say, that were uh, essentially um, crafted out of new possibilities of scales, they have no, they had no definite personality, right? They were just scales and could be treated anyhow. And as opposed to ragas, traditional ragas that have evolved in the musical community over many, over a long time, uh, through the work or through the music of many musicians, right? So that uh, the newer scale based ragas are contrived, they are contrived and that, that makes them less interesting. Now in Hindustani music, the creation of new ragas from new concocted scales is relatively less prevalent. Um, as I said, one can think of a hitherto unused, unheard of scale and render it as a raga. One can do that. But this, uh, be, and this is what has happened to, to quite an extent in Carnatic music. Um, and we do have a few stray cases in Hindustani music, but by and large, Hindustani musicians haven't gone down this path. Uh, well established ragas are preferred and uh, novelty by way of new scales is not that um, 
uh, enthusiastically sought after. And this is perfectly fine and healthy because you see a raga is not a scale as I have said many times and one can't really bestow a personality upon a scale at the individual's level. This is something, the personality of a raga is something that accrues over many years within the community. So um, how about the repertoire of ragas then? Is it stagnant? I mean, doesn't it grow? Because certainly in Carnatic music, the, the, the repertoire, the number of ragas uh, has increased exponentially because of this, uh, uh, this propensity to uh, create new ragas out of new scales. Um, in Hindustan music, as I said, it is not so prevalent. So how then, uh, what about the repertoire of ragas and is it static? Certainly not. Um, the repertoire of the, the ragas that are being performed today, that corpus is not the same that was performed 100 years ago. And that was not the same that was performed 200 years ago. So the corpus of ragas does change. Ragas change subtly, very subtly, but they do change themselves. I, I want to go over two uh, ways in which the repertoire of ragas is, uh, uh, has been increased in uh, Hindustani music. And these are, one, uh, one of them is uh, ragas that are imported from Carnatic music. There has been uh, give and take. Carnatic music has taken ragas from uh, Hindustani music and Hindustani music has taken ragas from Carnatic music. What they do with it is quite different. Um, and I, I will talk about how a couple of Carnatic ragas that are basically South Indian in origin, how they have been uh, worked upon, how they have been uh, assimilated into the uh, Hindustani tradition. The two ragas are Hamsadhwani and Abhogi Kannada. Abhogi is the name of the Carnatic raga and it has it is given a Kannada ang in the Hindustani tradition and that is very interesting how this uh, this little extra feature is uh, inbuilt or is, is is kind of inserted into the uh, raga into abhogi to give it a very distinctly Hindustani flavor. Both abhogi, Kannada and Hamsadhwani are um, well integrated into the Hindustani uh, tradition, Hindustani performance tradition um, and they are performed in all three genres that is khayal, drupad and instrumental music. Let's take Hamsadhwani first. Um, Hamsadhwani is a pentatonic out of raga. Uh, so is Abhogi. We will come to that later. But Hansadhvani is um, goes like this. The basic scale is this. This is the bare skeleton of the scale. The Carnatic music. Uh, the way Carnatic music uh, treats ragas is very different from uh, the, the raga lakshanas or the, the way we handle ragas is very different from how you handle them in Hindustani music. So the concept of vadi, samvadi, nyasas were, they are there but in a very different form. Uh, especially vadi, samvadi are not really uh, part of how uh, ragas are treated in Carnatic music. So in Carnatic music, Hamsadhvani goes like this. Pagari 
पगरी सानी गरी सानी पगरी सो द कर्नाटिक म्यूजिक रियली इज मोर वेरी वेरी मच मोर फ्रेज ओरिएंटेड वेरी डेंस क्लस्टर्स ऑफ टाइटनेट phrases that is how a carnatic music uh, goes you know the ragas are explode like this um now when hansa dhwani was taken up by hindustani musicians what they did was they um they made rishabha ri the nyasa swara and also the vadi vadi samvadi of uh, hansa dhwani are rishabha and ri and pa so it sounds like this in you sing it in hindustani uh, in the hindustani idiom you know the khayal idiom to, uh, more specifically pagare gare ni pa pa sa so this pa sa this uh, prayoga or this combination this pa sa phrase is very very important in the hindustani uh, hamsa dhwani which is not so in carnatic um and again the stopping on the re in, in such a very deliberate manner so again uh, the way uh, hamsa dhwani has been uh, given a form in hindustani music pare निसरी गे घरे घरे पी स गे गपनी पनी सरे प गे गप so that is how uh, Hamsa Dhwani has assumed a very very distinctive form in Hindustani music. See though in Carnatic music when we sing Hamsa Dhwani. Uh, we don't really you know think of ri as an anyasa swara or uh, you know or, or as a vadi and all that we don't do that because as i said it's very phrase oriented to it uh, clusters of phrases uh, and uh, much more than uh, his asanic music uh, but if you actually analyze hamsa dhwani as it is sung in carnatic music it does seem that ri can be ri is a favored place of ending swaras though you know it's not as if ga is not or pa is not but uh, it does seem that way and it seems that when the hindustani musicians took Karna- took hamsa dhwani for carnatic music they uh, listen to it with that uh, those lenses right and they were able to uh, give a very 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 typical hindustani uh, flavor to hamsa dhwani The story of Abhogi is uh, also very interesting. Abhogi is another uh, uh, pretty old raga in Carnatic music, and that is also pentatonic. The basic scale of Abhogi is Sadi ga ma da sa sa ga ma ga ri sa. These are some phrases of Abhogi. So when 
it was adopted into hindustani music it was given a kannada ang the kannada ang one of the kannada angs is this gamari uh, phrase um, with a particular oscillation of ga the kannada ang is one of the main uh, aspects of it is this ga ಸರಿ ಗ So this is how abhogi which was taken from carnatic music is given a and the kannada ang and it was assimilated into hindustani music in a uh, in a much more interesting manner that is it is not just that you take the scale of the raga that uh, is hamsadhvani or abhogi but you actually invest that scale with a particular personality and that is what has happened in the case of hamsadhvani and abhogi kannada the other uh, strategy for uh, through which new ragas have uh, come into circulation in hindustani music is the uh, astonishing phenomenon of jod ragas and we will look at this in the next uh, video <laughs>